One of the more important menu options that allow you to change the global features of GameMaker Studio is Preferences. To find Preferences, click on the File option in the main menus, and near the bottom you'll find Preferences. If you click on it, a new window will open up. From here you'll be offered a lot of tabs to go through and a lot of options to change, so we'll tackle each one at a time. The first tab is General. The first option is Show Recently Edited Games in the File menu. If this is checked, then the 8 most recently edited games will appear under the Recent Files in the File menu. Here's where you find recent projects. The next checkbox in the General tab is Close Compile Form After Execution. Whenever you run your game, or you compile it to an executable, then the compile window will show up. But if you don't want to see your compile form every single time, you can tick this box to close the compile form after execution. This frees up a lot of workspace for you. The next option is Delete from Resource Tree, Deletes from Disk. Every resource you put into your tree is saved on your computer. If you no longer wish to have a resource, you can always delete it out of your resource tree. If you have this box checked, when you delete a resource out of your resource tree, it will also delete the file from your computer. And that's it, you can't get that file back. Checking this box is a good way to free up space on your hard disk. Just be careful though, because you won't be able to get your files back. The next checkbox is Do Not Launch Game in Full Screen. There's another option in Global Game Settings to allow your game to launch in full screen. If you were to compile that game, when a player opens up your game, he'll see it in full screen. But sometimes when you're working on your game, you don't always want it to go into full screen, and it may be easier to debug if it's not in full screen. So if you check this box, it will override that game setting, meaning that your game won't launch full screen even though you tell it to while you're in the development environment. The next checkbox is Show Commands in Compile Window. This just means that whenever you run or compile your game and the compiler window opens up, Certain commands won't be shown if you have this box unchecked. The default keeps it on, and it is recommended that you switch this on, because you will need to see all of the compiler information, especially if you have a problem and need to submit a report to YoYo Games. The next option is Show Commands with Verbose Flag. If this is checked, you'll get even more information in your compiler window about the game that you're working on while it's running. But because this picks up more information for you to see, it may actually slow down the app that you're running. So therefore, it's flagged off by default. The next option is Show Compile Form on Startup. Quite simply, if you have it on when you launch GameMaker, you'll get your compiler window. And if you don't check it, then it doesn't launch on Startup. It's actually really simple. The next option is Enable Backup on Save. This is a really great feature in GameMaker Studio. Whenever you're working on your games, if you're just kind of messing around and making a small game, backing it up may not be that important. But as your game grows, and it's a game you want to eventually sell, it's best to have really good backups. Now GameMaker offers that for you, but it's also best to do it yourself. If you check Enable Backup on Save, you have three options below. The third dialog field at the bottom is your backup directory. This is where your backups will be saved. These are separate from your projects and you can even pick a number of how many backups GameMaker will save for you. Once it reaches its limit, the newest backup you're saving will overwrite your oldest backup. Just above that we have two other fields. We have your temp directory and your asset cache directory. This is where all your temporary files will go and all of your cache will be saved. Clicking on the dot 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 button or the ellipsis button will allow you to pick a different section on your computer to save your temp directory or your asset cache directory or even your backup directory. And you can always clear your backup data, your asset cache, or even your temp data. On the other side of the general tab, we have Show News on Startup. If you have this checked, GameMaker News will appear whenever you launch the software. The next option is Show News in Default Browser. This works in conjunction with Show News on Startup. If you show news on Startup, it normally appears inside the development environment. But if you check Show News in Default Browser, when you open up GameMaker, the news will open up in your default web browser, be it Chrome, Internet Explorer, or Firefox, or whatever. The next checkbox is Always Reload Changed Files. If you change any of the files that are in the folders for your projects, GameMaker will normally prompt you to reload those assets so they update in your project. If you check this box though, it'll just always reload these changed files. It will always update, it won't ask you to do it. 
The next checkbox is automatically increase build number. GameMaker can keep track of a build number for you. And if you want, every time you compile it, you can have it increase the build number. This could be useful if you don't want to increase the build number yourself. In fact, the next checkbox is automatically add build number and date constants. If you open up your constants or macros folder in your resource tree, and you have this checked, a constant for build date and version will be added to your constants list or macros list. The next checkbox is add configuration and version to file name on create executable. Whenever you're ready to create an executable of the game you're working on, GameMaker will automatically put in the name of the project and then if you have this checked, it'll also put in the configuration and the version. This can be useful if you're constantly creating executables of your game and you want different version numbers. The next checkbox is do not show YoYo Games logo on main form. If this isn't checked, at the bottom left, the YoYo Games logo will appear. Unfortunately, it cuts into the real estate of your resource tree. The next option is do not show prompt on closing code editor. If this is checked and you close your code editor, your code window will automatically save. But you might not want it to automatically save. What if you made some changes and you don't like them? Well, if you uncheck this box, it will then prompt you to save or not save. That way, if you make changes you don't like and this is not checked, it'll say, hey, do you want to save this? And you're like, no, no, it's okay. I don't want to save it. I didn't like the changes I made. The next option is big resource tree icons. You'll have to restart the software to see the changes, but all it does is make the icons in your resource tree larger. After that, we have enable pop-out windows. If this is not checked, all of the windows that pop up inside of GameMaker are going to be constrained to the boundaries of the development environment. But if you check this, then any window that pops up, like the sprite editor or your object editor or whatever, you can then drag and move anywhere on your monitor, which is useful if you have more than one monitor. The next checkbox is automatically clean temp data on shutdown. If you look back at temp directory, that's where all the temporary information about all the games you work on is going to be stored. But this can kind of get cluttered. So much like you would clear temporary files from your computer or your web browser, you can turn on this option and allow GameMaker to automatically clear your temp folder every time you shut down the software. The last section in the general tab is your skin selector. I believe GameMaker Studio comes with three defaults, which is GM Green, GM HTML5, that's the orange color I'm using, and GameMaker 8. GameMaker 8 is a white background instead of a dark gray background. This is for users who prefer a lighter background. It is possible to load in custom skins as well. And whenever you have a custom skin, you should put it in your local app data folder. Moving on to the next tab titled Forms, the first section is called Sprite Form. There's one option in here called Show the Origin in the Sprite Image. This will toggle whether or not you get a crosshair indicating where the origin of your sprite is whenever you're in the Sprite Properties window. The next section is the Object Form. There's a checkbox for In Object Properties, Show Hints for the Actions. If this is toggled, and you hover your mouse over one of the actions, then you'll get a tooltip description. The tooltip just shows you a sneak preview of what's inside the code. After that, we have a spot called Default Tab to select. In your Object Properties window, all the way on the right side, we have different tabs like Move, Main 1, Main 2, Control, Score, Extra, Draw, and you may have more than that. But each one is associated with a number. Move is 1, Main 1 is 2, Main 2 is 3, Control is 4, and so on and so forth. The number you put into this field determines which tab will be opened by default whenever you open up the Object Properties window. If you're only ever writing code, which is in the fourth tab, Control, you can use the number 4 here. Then every time you open an Object Properties window, it'll default to the Control tab. The next section is the Room Form. The first option is, when closing, remove instances outside the room. It is possible to place instances outside of the boundaries of the room you're working in. Sometimes you might want to do that, therefore you want to uncheck this box. If it is checked, those instances will be deleted. The next option is remember room settings when closing the form. If this is checked, certain things about your room property window, or the room editor, will be remembered. Then if you go back into the same room, GameMaker will remember certain settings. Things like whether or not to show the grid, or whether or not to delete underlying objects. The next checkbox is Room Grid On by Default. Simply, this is just whether or not the room grid should be on by default. So if you uncheck this, then the grid won't be on by default. 
The next section is fill room with color when no background color is selected. This is only for the editor. This applies to the draw background color checkbox inside your room editor. If you don't have that checked, but this fill room with color when no background color selected is ticked, you still get this color right here drawn onto the background. But if this is off and you uncheck the draw background color, you'll only get a grid seeing the checkerboard pattern behind the grid. The next option is show minimap in room editor. Quite simply, just like grid, it just determines whether or not the minimap should be shown by default. The last section is general, and it has a box for open forms as maximized by default. And if this is ticked, all forms you open will open up maximized, meaning that every properties window and every editor will fill up your entire monitor, which isn't always something you want. The next tab has to do with your scripts and code. The first option is group undo operations, and it allows you to set the number of undos that it will remember. A good example of that is typing out a whole line. If you type out one full word and then hit undo, it will undo that entire word rather than just one character. It's a little more useful to have it on than have it off. The next section is automatic indentation. When this is set on, then the enter and backspace keys automatically add and remove indents based on the line of code above. The indent amount changes how far in, in spaces, the indent will occur. You know, whenever you press the tab key. The next checkbox is smart tabs. I may have to just show you what it does. In most document programs, tabbing just moves in by a set amount. Let's say four spaces. Every time you press it, your cursor moves by four spaces. This is indenting. If smart tabs is checked though, and you press tab, your cursor will go to the next free space according to the line that's above. Here's what this looks like. The next checkbox is allow cursor beyond end of line. Normally if you click on a line in your code, the cursor will snap to the next available space. However, if you check this on, you can click and put the cursor anywhere in your code, any space that's available. It won't automatically snap to the end of the current line. This could be useful for putting comments in different places without it snapping to your code. The next section I think is pretty important. It's show auto completion options. Whenever you're writing out a function or a variable or something like that, especially if it's built in, GameMaker will provide a drop down menu of suggestions. You can set the delay in initial delay in milliseconds and update delay in milliseconds. The initial delay determines how long after it's detected that you're writing something that it knows, it should show the drop down menu. And the update delay is just how soon the autocomplete window should refresh. The next checkbox is show function argument help. If this is checked at the bottom of your code window, you'll see the arguments that are necessary for this function, which is very helpful. So I suggest keeping it on. The next checkbox is show find strings. This affects the search or find option in your code editor. Whenever you're searching inside your code, GameMaker will highlight anything within your code that matches what you're looking for if show find strings is checked. But if it's not checked and you type in to look for something in the find field, nothing will be highlighted for you. I find this very useful and I think you should keep it on. The next checkbox is show line numbers. This just determines whether or not your code and your script editors should display line numbers. Once again, very useful and I think you should keep it on. Mainly because any error you get is going to reference a line number. The next checkbox is show code snippets with F2. I'm just going to have to show you what this one does. If you've toggled this checkbox inside a script editor, when you press F2, you'll get a drop down list of pre-built statements. Then you can select one of them and GameMaker will automatically fill in all of the appropriate syntax for that particular statement. This could prove very useful for some people if they want to code quickly or if they just want a little help with the syntax of their code. And the very last option in newer versions of GameMaker is use the new debugger. I'll get into debugging later, but this checkbox just determines whether GameMaker should use its old debugger or its new debugger, but I'll show you that in a debug lesson. On the right side, we have an option called show matching brackets. Anytime your cursor is near an open or closed bracket, it'll highlight it blue and then show its matching bracket in blue. This is very useful if you're not sure which bracket matches the one you're on. So it's kind of good for self debugging. 
The next checkbox is check code while typing. This just allows GameMaker to check for errors in your code while you're typing, which is very useful because I think you should be checking for errors all the time. The next option is enable bold on script keywords. This toggles whether or not script keywords will be bold or not bold. Script keywords are things like self, other, all, and no one. The next checkbox sets whether or not to use color coding. Color coding is great. If you've noticed by default, you get all these different colors when you type your code. You get oranges and reds and blues and greens, and this is your chance to change them. You can change the normal text. You can change keywords. You can change values. You can change comments. You can change constants, built-in variables, functions, script names, resource names, background color, current line, selection color, line number color, line number background, error line color, selected line number, and line changed color. There are a lot of options. So while you're coding, if something's not really gelling with you, or for instance, you don't like that values and constants are both red, this is where you get to change the color. If you have a really good setup that you like, you can always export this as a color file. Then someone else, or even you, if you want to install GameMaker and install it later, can re-import this color file and set all your colors again. There's even a button for selecting the font you like to use. The next tab in Preferences is Editors. This allows you to set up external editors for GameMaker. All you have to do is direct GameMaker to each of the programs you'd like to use. If you don't like the code editor that GameMaker uses, you can always find another code editor and link it here. You can do the same with the image editor, and even set it as the default if you wish. Some people might prefer GIMP, Paint, or Photoshop. If you have a Swift viewer for flash animations, you can set that here. You can even have an external sound editor for both WAV and MP3. If you like to use things like Audacity, or Sound Recorder, or Sound Booth, or whatever you use. Depending on which version of GameMaker you have, you may have some or all of these options. And I'm sure as GameMaker expands, they'll add more options for external editors. But if you're happy with all the internal stuff, like the sprite editor and the code editor, you don't have to set up an external editor. Currently, GameMaker doesn't have a sound editor, so you will have to use some sort of external editor for sound, or just import pre-made sounds. Most of the other tabs deal with specific export modules. To be fair and simple, I'm just going to concentrate on Windows, because that's the default that comes with GameMaker. And I will make other videos specific to HTML5, Android, iOS, and the like. So for now, I'm going to skip over the tab called Web Server and go to Windows. Typically, you don't have to touch this tab because GameMaker should just have everything set up for you, it doesn't really matter, you will be able to export to Windows no problem. As long as you're using a Windows machine, you'll be able to export to Windows. There's one more tab that's not specific to an export module, and it's called Source Control. This is typically used for group projects, and I'll do a video completely on Source Control, so I'm not going to show much about it here. I hope you now know that GameMaker has a lot of preferences for you to check, 